Hi developers, subscribers and friends. Welcome to the Force Developer channel. I'm Stefan Bertosz and in the today's video I would like to share some lessons learned uh, in regards to uh, database connection and leaks in Java. So let's set the scene. Uh, what I want to show is a simple project which will um, insert some uh, data into database via some connection. So we will use Java, Spring Boot um, and Oracle database. So just for this purpose I installed locally uh, Oracle XE free database. This will be used just to, to show uh, the connections and some details for this purpose. And because um, I wanted to show something interesting. I also uh, downloaded a CSV data file for that purpose. So in the Kaggle platform uh, I searched for some interesting data and I found online payment fraud detection data which is a nice set of uh, transactions and as well some um, basically some uh, fields which are there to um, show that this transaction is a fraud one. So you can easily download this and it is having like 400, uh, 500 megabytes of data. So which is a good data set for whatever test you plan to do. So as a preparation, I downloaded this data set stored into the disk drive. And as well, I used uh, SQL developer because we are in the Oracle database world and that's the best tool for this uh, purpose and I created or I will create a table court payment uh, simple as that I connect it uh, to my database and I will issue a create table command and basically we should see that this table is created and it should be empty so it is that's great and also let's show how the uh, Java project was created. It was created by using Spring Initializer. So it's more or less a standard project, uh, except of the standard stuff. Uh, it is having Spring Boot Starter as a standard and some starter for data JDBC. It has an OJDBC driver, open CSV for reading CSV, Lombok. Yeah. And that's more or less it. So what does this code do? Um, this is very a simple uh, command line application. And when you start the application, it will basically uh, use the CSV file, which we downloaded in the previous step. It will be as a parameter to the process data method of data service. So if we look into the code, what does the process data do? It's basically using the file which we have. It's creating a CSV reader instance um, and uh, it's skipping the first line which is basically header and then by line by line it's um, reading the data from the CSV file creating a new object setting all the uh, parameters for this object and adding this to the list uh, if there is a, of course it's an endless loop until the end of the file if the row index can be divided by 10,000 then we will try to batch insert this into the database clear the list and continue with the next batch what is inside the batch insert batch insert is a simple um, low level uh, way how you can insert data into database by using a connection connection we are getting from the spring data source and for the insert we are using a simple insert with all the columns and values as placeholders and basically we are then using prepared statement and looping the whole list and setting the parameters to that after that we execute batch close the statement and close the connection and that's it so um, 
what I will like to demonstrate is that this code is um, creating a connection leak. Why? Yeah, because here we are opening the connection. There is no uh, private resources. There is no um, proper handling of the connection. Oh, of course, I forgot to comment this out. So now it will not work. Um, what else we have? We have a payment object, which is basically having all the fields. And as I already showed, the service method. So how to run the code? Uh, it should be pretty easy. Um, so then let's start the application. And what should we see? We should see some compilation steps and then the execution. So now it is inserting some rows. And you see uh, this delay. This would mean that there's something wrong with our application because it's not continuing with the next records. And I will show you why, how to debug this and how to fix it. And now it crashed on what did it crash? So if we go back to the error, we should see that there, there is a lack of connection available. So basically there was a timeout we, mm, in the Spring Boot, the default uh, uh, pool management uh, library is Hikari. So he didn't found a connection because we already consume everything. Okay, if that happens, what can we do? First of all, maybe we could enable some debugs for the Hikari. Let's try it, if this will help. Where we can do this? If we go to resources application YAML, I didn't show this before, but basically there is a Spring data source configuration, the standard one, but then you can enable logging level for Hikari. Let's enable that and let's see what will be the effect. So let's try this again. So we started and we see something is going on. We see also some details about the connection. But again, we are stuck. On the beginning, there was a total size. And how many connections, so it basically is debugging the connections. And you see each time we added a new connection which is most probably not correct. Why? Because there is a, uh, some standard setup which Spring Boot use for Ikari. So at the end, it was saying total 10 from active 10, waiting one. So we were waiting basically for a new one, but this will never happen because the connections were not closed. So um, what next we can do? We could do um, a lot of things. Maybe some feature you, you don't know is that Hikari is also having some leak detection uh, functionality. So if you add this to your Spring Data Source Hikari configuration and start again, it should report the leak. So let's try it. And basically, it should find our leak and report the, um, this in some code. And voila, this is there. And let's try to find the place. So it should also report some stack trace, connection lead detected. And if we go here, we are um, redirected to the code where the connection link is. Because this connection is not closed. Great. Uh, what else we can do? If we would have the um, the third party um, scanning tool like SonarCube installed, then of course we can install the plugin like SonarCube or something similar, and you can perform um, code analysis. And if you do that, 
it's called sonar lint it should show you um, the connection links and here i have three uh, findings so most probably the first one is the connection link and basically uh, it is saying that uh, i'm missing the finally cause or a private resources i could use of course and the same for the prepared statement so this code is not really well written um what else uh, should you know is they said that there is some default configuration of the data source in spring boot so what can you do is go to data source configuration class And you should see you know some configurations uh, so there are like two options uh, the tomcat data source or hikari one and you see that here this is the hikari one hikari data source but the default is not in the hikari data source but in hikari config And if you open the Hikari config, you would see mm, like the values for the default timeouts, but as well the default pool size. And that's the exact pool size you, mm, you've seen that we had like 10 connection max. So obviously in my uh, configuration file, I can override these defaults. I can say how many connections I want and so on and so on. But that would not help me at the end with the with the connection program because it would happen just later on until all my connections are not uh, consumed so then how to fix the error that's maybe the most important part is basically rewrite the code with the mm, concept of try with resources so let's write this try let's move the connection into the try block and as well the prepared statement and obviously I'm missing the braces so let's add braces and we can remove those two statements we need to keep the execute batch but except of that the code looks fine we are opening the connection, we are opening the prepared statement, we just need to move as well the SQL statement, which is static before, and now we should be fine. Should we test this? I think yes. Let's try it. So let's run this again. And when the application starts, it should not report any connection leaks, it will report uh, the statistics for the connections after some time there is some period for periodic checks of the connections but it would basically finish loading our csv file until the end into the database the file is very big so you know there is a lot of uh, rows inserted and this is done so basically uh, what happened is we process all the rows and all the connections at the end were of course released and you see that at the end we were at zeros but if we would scroll to some uh, to some previous statement we should see uh, you know how many connections are in total 10 active just one and idle nine which looks fine to me and that's more or less all so basically just a summary if you want to find some connection links leaks you can use uh, third party plugins like sonar sonar lint and so on it should show you the possible connection links those could be false positive you should rewrite them into private resources of course don't forget about the prepared statements uh, otherwise if you cannot change this you can add at least some logging for the hikari to see the count of connections how it changed you can also leverage the hikari link detection threshold 
and it would show you exactly the connection links. But of course, if you are done with the investigation, maybe just remove that, change the debug level to info or just remove uh, this package because it would uh, lock a lot of uh, stuff into the uh, console or file. Other than that, that's all. Hope you liked the video. If yes, click on, um, click on the like button or subscribe to the channel. There will be more videos like this and others. So thank you for watching and bye.